I was asked by a journalist the other day whether I thought that the short-term and very important challenges created by the credit crunch meant that boards had taken their eye off a number of very, very important corporate governance issues, and he was particularly interested in leadership and succession planning, because they were so focused on these short-term challenges uh, that they had to face up to. Uh, thought about it and said to him that actually, whilst you might imagine that to be the case, in fact, many of the non-exec directors we were talking to and chairman that we work with um, were very conscious that there was a risk that they might do that. And actually, therefore, they were trying very hard to make sure that they remain, retained a focus on all of the key areas of risk that were important and didn't get overly focused and distracted by the short-term needs. I have to say, though, that, that on reflection over the last couple of days, I'm not sure that was the right answer. Because actually what we are finding is hap that has happened is that in this current environment, many chairmen and many boards are actually even more worried about quality of leadership and about ways in which the companies they are responsible for are developing leaders. And in many, and in many organizations, the, the, the risk around succession and leadership has actually moved even further up the agenda for boards. Now, why is that? Uh, because a number of, of chairmen have made the same point to us. And what, what has happened is that the credit crunch has, if you will, drawn back the veil and allowed these board members to see, really for the first time, that the world that their organisations are competing in and trying to survive in is actually much, much more sophisticated, much more interconnected and, inter and, inter and, and interdependent, and much harder to work out than we ever thought it was. Um, it's kind of the stark clarity that the credit crunch has given us has just brought home to roost this degree of complexity. So we now know, for example, that societal trends in one part of the world have huge economic impact in other parts of the world. We now know that um, best practice management techniques and leading edge organisational models, frankly, were not good enough to stop some of the biggest organisations in the world going to the wall. Uh, and we've seen that some of the you know, previously considered to be best leaders on the world, frankly, weren't good enough. So that means that boards have become increasingly worried about the quality of their leaders and the quality of their succession and leadership development tools, bearing in mind the complexity that they now see out there uh, in the global marketplace. Uh, conversations we've had with directors around that have led, have led them to conclude that actually the leaders of these companies, the leaders of companies tomorrow, are going to have to f quite fundamentally change the way in which, uh, or, or some, some of the core beliefs they have about business. Um, they're going to have to change some of the sort of mental models and frameworks that they use um, as tools to help them reduce some of this complexity into, into things they can get their head around. Because those tools, frankly, aren't good enough. Um, they're going to have to change the way in which their organisations are connected into the external world and some of the key relationships that they have because otherwise they're not going to be able to gather the data and see the trends that, are, that, that we now know have such an important impact on corporates. And they're going to have to quite dramatically rethink the way in which they understand talent in their organisations. They're going to have to really understand the capabilities and insights that different people have in their organisations and, and move away from the more traditional ways of understanding talent and more traditional ways of developing and, and, and engaging leaders. Now tomorrow's company is looking at a number of these different areas but this report that we're talking about right now really focuses on that last one which is the whole area of talent and leadership development. We think there's some fascinating insights in here that will give leaders a, a different way of looking at how they identify, define and identify talent, both within the organisation and without. It'll give that they'll have to look differently at the way in which they pluck that talent out and start to develop it. And they're gonna to have to think differently about the way in which they engage with that talent as they understand how important it becomes so that it wants to work for me rather than going to work for the competition. 
We hope that you find the report valuable. We think it's very valuable. And we think this report and the detailed conversations and research that will follow are going to give tremendous insights, not only to boards, but to leaders of companies all over the world tomorrow.